Welcome to the Exercise Science Playlist where I take recent high quality pieces of research and communicate them in a simple, concise, easy to digest way so that you can apply the information or not, it depends on you. And so I could make these videos really long and winding, but I really just want to take the information and simplify it because I feel like sometimes the overcomplication of things can actually be counterproductive. But as always, please feel free to read the research articles yourself, cluster sets. Chronic effects of altering resistance training set configurations using cluster sets, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Firstly, what are cluster sets? Essentially, if you have a traditional set, a normal set, you complete a certain amount of repetitions continuously until you reach the end of that set. However, you may break up this workload into clusters of repetitions. To do this, you very simply perform a few repetitions, then you take a break, a rest, and then you complete a few more repetitions. By breaking the workload, you have the potential to decrease fatigue. If you think about a traditional set, as you get towards the end of your set, you may feel more fatigue. You may feel tired with those last few repetitions. And therefore cluster sets may help to decrease this fatigue and thereby have performance benefits. And so it's important to note that there are many ways that you can implement cluster sets. Many models, many coaches have different methods, for example. And indeed, Latella 2019 state that the results of this meta-analysis revealed a significant benefit for both the inter-repetition rest and intra-set rest cluster set structures with less evidence available for the rest pause method. And so there's just a few different cluster set methods mentioned there. And different researchers have different definitions when it comes to this. But one applicable piece of information I can give you, when you think of cluster sets, you are not necessarily training to failure as the goal will be performance with each repetition. And so reworking that, if one of the potential benefits of cluster sets compared to traditional sets is that towards the end of your cluster set repetitions, you're going to feel less fatigue and perhaps have better performance then you wouldn't really be training that cluster set to failure. But just don't worry too much about different models and definitions. Just very simply think about it as breaking up your workload into small clusters with rest in between. And so an example of cluster set methods would be with six repetitions, you may, for example, do three workloads of two. Or if you were doing 10 repetitions in a traditional set, you may perform five reps have a short break, then the next five as a further workload. And so these are just examples. I'm not prescribing that exact cluster model to you, to be clear. This is purely for visual learning purposes. And as always, you need to apply to your needs. So if you're going to use cluster sets, absolutely apply to what suits you. And some of the variables you may consider is the specific exercise, your exercise selection, the intensity, the amount of weights you're using. And so here's an example. Tufano et al. 2017 have this visualization where you can see four repetitions, 30 seconds rest, four repetitions, 30 seconds rest, four reps, then 120 seconds to the next cluster. And so there are many ways that you can structure your cluster sets. Just use one that suits you. Keep it simple, have your total amount of repetitions that you want, and just break them down into mini workloads where you perform a few repetitions, have a rest, a few more repetitions until you reach your total repetition goal. And so how much rest would you take in between these mini workloads of reps? Again, there's no one size fits all answer here because people have different needs and it depends on many variables. And so you may need to experiment to find the sweet spot for you for specific exercises and your intensity and your total repetition but a very common range given is 10 to 30 seconds rest. And if you are using a more sub-maximal load, an, a lighter weight, your rest duration may be shorter. It may be at the beginning end of that range. And so there's just one application for you. And so this 2021 meta-analysis wanted to look at cluster sets compared to traditional sets for neuromuscular adaptations. Basically the effect that cluster sets can have on, on your muscle in terms of size and strength. And so what they did as a meta-analysis, which again is the highest form of evidence base, is they had a selection criteria for which to filter out poor pieces of information, poor pieces of research, and just include high quality data to analyze. And some of the filtering standards in this paper included participants had to have no medical conditions or injury. There had to be a cluster set intervention, of course. There had to be comparison against traditional sets. It had to be greater or equal to three weeks in study length. And the research had to measure at least one of these issues, for example, strength, power, velocity, hypertrophy, muscular endurance. And so once going through the body of evidence into this topic, they were left with 29 pieces of research to analyze. And so what did they find? Well, really, 
there was no difference between using traditional sets and cluster sets for the measures of strength, hypertrophy, endurance, and power. And furthermore, these results included looking at the training of different body parts, volume, the exercise selection. And so the most recent meta-analysis we have into cluster sets is interesting as it updates previous information where attributes such as velocity and power were seen as a significant benefit of cluster sets. And so this slightly contradicts previous research. And that's why continuous research into topics is so important. But hold on a second, because this meta-analysis did show several benefits of cluster sets. For example, that they may allow for that neuromuscular adaptation with less fatigue than traditional sets. And so that is an absolutely key takeaway. If fatigue is an issue for you during your training, if you're using traditional sets, especially those last few repetitions, and you feel that your exercise execution or performance is suffering as a result, then absolutely there's an evidence based to suggest that you may want to introduce cluster sets as an alternative option or tool. And so those findings differ slightly from a previous meta-analysis we have from 2019, where power and velocity were seen as greater benefits of cluster sets. And so again, there was a strict selection criteria, and this led them to analyzing 25 research studies with a total participant size of 317 people. And so what were the key points from this 2019 meta-analysis comparing cluster sets and traditional sets? Cluster set training is an effective means of attenuating velocity and power loss during a resistance training session. Cluster sets appear to be most beneficial for moderate and high load paradigms where fatigue has the potential to impair performance. Additional research is needed in order to fully understand the benefits of cluster sets with additional exercises between sectors and across the lifespan. And the conclusion of that meta-analysis. Collectively, the results of this investigation highlight the benefit of cluster sets to maximize neuromuscular performance during an acute resistance training session. In particular, the loss of velocity and power and potentially peak force can be attenuated by intraset, interrepetition and rest pause paradigms. Given that mean force was not different between cluster sets and traditional sets, and power is a function of force and velocity, it seems logical that velocity should be considered in the primary assessment of cluster sets of efficacy. And so most certainly velocity is the key takeaway from that meta-analysis, as well as the issue of reducing fatigue. And so when we take these two meta-analyses, how do we conclude it? So here is my practical takeaway for you, without the free toy. For muscle growth, or neuromuscular adaptations towards your specific goal. You don't need to use cluster sets. Traditional sets with effective overload are absolutely hugely effective for you. And so in no way when you see research like this, should you just dump all your traditional sets and use cluster sets for everything, that's not really the application. But for the potential for increased velocity, you may want to consider introducing cluster sets. However, after looking at these two meta-analyses, I would say that it's more specifically velocity when attributed to submaximal loads. And so the variable of the intensity you're using is an important factor to consider. But here is the really important application that I take away from this body of evidence. If you suffer from fatigue during your sessions, which may hinder your performance, then absolutely cluster sets are an option for you. Cluster sets are another tool in our arsenal, and you can absolutely consider introducing them into your training for certain performance benefits.